We're here in the McMullen Museum of Art at an exhibition, Gateway to Himalayan Art, drawn from the Rubin Museum in New York City, which focuses on the art of the Himalayas, Tibet, and Inner Asia. And we're looking at a sculpture of Mahakala. Mahakala means great black one. He's one of the eight great Dharma protectors. He's a remover of obstacles, both internal and external. Mahakala comes in many forms, and this form is Panjaranatha, or Lord of the Pavilion in Tibetan Gurki Gompo. He's the primary protector of the Sakya school of Tibetan Buddhism, and is also a specially revered protector in Mongolia. In Tibetan Buddhism, you have both peaceful and wrathful deities. And we're certainly looking at a wrathful figure here. His eyes are bulging. His hair looks like flames. He's bearing his fangs. His tongue is lolling. He's ornamented with a diadem of skulls, with a garland of severed heads, and surrounded by flames. In his hands, we see a flaying knife and a skull filled with blood. And while these figures may be scary, they are in fact considered to be manifestations of wisdom and compassionate means, the two aspects required for attaining enlightenment. And so, for instance, he's standing on a corpse, and the corpse is the classic symbol of the ego, which is the greatest obstacle to attaining enlightenment, attachment to self. He is there to protect us, to help us on our path to enlightenment, and the object that he's holding across his chest is an object that's specific to this version, this emanation of Mahakala. This long stick is called a gandhi. It's a wooden gong that's used to summon monks. And according to his liturgy, he uses this to summon all of the 72 forms of Mahakala, which emanate from it. And if you look closely, you can actually see two sets of doors. So not only do we have him protecting us, but he can call on essentially an army of Mahakalas. Some have recently suggested that this shape is derived from a crossbar and may reveal his origins as a door guardian. Because we do sometimes see him as a figure guarding Buddhist temples. Wrathful figures at the entrance to temples is a very common convention. However, the origins of this gong aren't clear because this iconographic form cradling the Gandhi is not described in his early liturgies or sadhana. This, combined with the fact that figures in his retinue bear Tibetan place names, suggests that this particular form of Mahakala may have been a Tibetan invention. Images of Mahakala go back centuries. Mahakala came with Buddhism from India. And Mahakala is considered especially effective in military application. So the removal of physical threats and overcoming political obstacles. So I imagine this would make him a particularly important figure for political leaders, military leaders who might want to invoke his power. And so this is one of the reasons that the Mongol Empire was particularly interested in Mahakala and his practices. Mahakala was credited with intervening in several key battles in the founding of the Yuan Dynasty, Kublai Khan's empire in Asia. So a sculpture, for instance, in the Musée Guimet, dated to 1292, has an inscription which names Kublai Khan and his Tibetan imperial preceptor, and is an interesting window into the political role that Tibetan Buddhism played in the courts of Asia. These states looked to Buddhism for answers to real-world problems, including military problems and political problems. And these state practices of wrathful deities and Mahakala continue to this day. It's part of the living tradition. And we can see that in Bhutan. Raven-headed Mahakala played a key role in the founding narrative of Bhutan in the 17th century. And the king of Bhutan's crown is called the Raven Crown, a reference to this protector deity. And rituals to Mahakala to protect the state continue to this day in Bhutan. So this particular sculpture looks like metal, but we know that it's not. Damage on the back and a seam along the side indicates this is actually a clay image painted with gold pigment. If you look at the crown or the staff, you'll see they're not rendered completely in three-dimensional space. For instance, the finials of the crown and the ends of the staff have no backs. All the details are forward-facing, which is an indication that this is an impression from a stamp. And we get to look at this beautiful figure of Mahakala and all of those associations that he brings with him here at the McMullen Museum of Art.